Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Psych. Just kidding, guys. On to the video. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. It's time for Q and A. Hey everybody, I'm Jason. Hey, I'm Todd. This is our little badass Pomeranian Ziggy, and we're... The Clampy Boys. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Q&A. Q&A! And this is, I believe, episode number seven. Ooh. And because of all of the wonderful subscribers that we have, because we always say we have the best subscribers, and I genuinely mean that. We do have the best subscribers because we couldn't be doing this Q&A without all of you and without all of your awesome questions. So if a lot of you guys are enjoying this as much as we are, please keep the questions coming. Feel free to leave some on Instagram through DM for us. Please feel free to send us some through private email. And also just leave the questions as you always do down in the comments below. So with all that said, I think we need to get started on some questions. Let's do it. Come okay, on. let's do it. So the first question is from Danny McNally. So you would like to know if we are going to the RTR next year and also if we like to fly and if we have ever been in a helicopter. Okay, well, I mean, we would love to go to the RTR. It's one of our dream yes. bucket list things to do. Currently with our situation, we're not able to travel as far and for as long as possible. So for us currently, getting out to the RTR would probably take all the time and then we just have to turn around and come back. We, ironically, we could probably fly to the RTR. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a way to maximize our RV yeah. vacation is to yeah. take an airplane. We or maybe a helicopter. Exactly. Maybe a, we could helicopter over the RTR. Yes. Or someday over a volcano or a glacier. I'd love to get in a yeah. chopper one of these but days. But then once we got to the RTR, we would still need a place to couch surf on. That's true. Because uh, we wouldn't have our RV with us. Yeah. So we'd have to fly out there, rent an RV. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, one of these mm -hmm. days, we will do it. All right. The next question is from Bridge of View Adventures. And they also have a YouTube channel, so feel free to go and check these guys out if you want. And what they would like to know is if we can talk a little bit about our home base. Well, actually, a few Q&A videos back down the playlist. We actually really went into detail about our home base, and we talked about it, went into the rent and the you know pricing and all that stuff as well, why we picked this location. So we're not going to really go into it uh, in this video, so feel free to go back a few videos and check out that question, and that should hopefully answer everything for you. And we appreciate the question. Thank you. Yep, thank you. So the next question is from Bobby Hall, and their question is, do you guys find that you're a bit hesitant to uproot when you have gotten yourself settled in? Well, I mean, currently we don't do it very often, so it's still kind of exotic for us. Yeah. Everything's still kind of new <laughs> because we, we don't uproot as much. But I mean, when we get on the, the road full time, we'll, we're definitely we'll be looking forward to it becoming every day and it becoming sort of mundane, I guess, so that we can do it as quickly and effectively and move on to our next spot. As far as staying places, we definitely wouldn't want to uproot after like a couple of days. That would be just a little bit too much, but definitely we would like to stay for like weeks or like a month at a time and just slowly just keep on moving. So the next question is from Donna Early. This is such a great series. Oh, why, thank you. Thank we you. think it is too. We We're having a lot of fun doing it. As we've said in previous videos, we like doing this because we feel it's a great way where we can interact with all of our amazing subscribers. Exactly. I love that the two of you have your own role in creating these videos. When you first started the RV lifestyle, did the division of your roles come easy or did either of you have to grow into those roles? Well, I think I'll answer my role 
with the YouTube channel and that was pretty much uh, when we first got into the RV life getting Wally the Winnebago. I actually thought it'd be fun to do a YouTube channel and all along I would have been happy you know if we've gotten just 10 subscribers uh, because at the time we were just kind of creating videos as kind of like a journal you know for ourselves so when we're like you know in our 90s uh, we would have something fun to look back on to and watch. Yeah. But then, you know, um, we started getting like subscribers and people started commenting and really encouraging us uh, to produce more and more videos. And so, you know, we try to up the ante and up our game uh, and get like, you know, new equipment and stuff like that for recording the videos and just doing really fun stuff. So we decided that we would try to start doing videos at least once a week and um, up our game with also the editing and the software and stuff like that because our uh, first few videos I was pretty much doing an iMovie and you'll even notice in like our very first video uh, we even did like this little PowerPoint kind of presentation. Some of the video was actually uh, off my iPhone in land, uh, excuse me, and and you know the portrait mode and not landscape. So I think we've really progressed a lot. Uh, and then as far as Todd's role, I'll let him take over. Well, I mean, I I just naturally enjoy writing music, composing it, performing it. I love writing things like voiceovers and content, and I love being on stage or in front of a camera too. So the roles fell very naturally for me and um, hopefully we're just going to keep growing and continuing as we do this channel and just keep up in our game and having fun and having such a blast with all of you guys. So thanks for the question. Yeah, I, I just love all the things that I did and Jason gave me a wonderful opportunity to do them on a regular basis. So thank you, sir. Yeah, exactly. So I think we both evolved into the roles pretty much naturally from day one. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, Donna. That was a great question. We appreciate it. Yes. And we appreciate you. Yes. Mwah. <laughs> so the next question is from C. Wilson. Have you encountered any campground where you have not felt safe? Well, no, we have not. And even if we did, this little guy would protect us because he is fierce. Basically, he is. He's a badass. He really is. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, we just do a lot of research beforehand, making sure the campground itself is safe and reputable and that the area that we're staying in is, is safe. And we, we've never encountered any negativity or, or issues on the road so far. So, yay. Yep, yeah, we've always felt extremely safe. Mm -hmm. Very, very safe. So the next question is from Rolling RV Adventures. And they would like to know which drone did we buy? I see that there are a lot more restrictions being put on drone use. Did you have to take any special training or certification in order to be able to fly the drone? So the first part of your question is we bought a Mavic 2 Pro drone made by a company called DJI and it is a great drone that has, it has all of the latest technology, 4K video, obstacle avoidance. I've done a couple of videos about it, so feel free to check those out if you want to learn a little bit more about the drone that we have. The second part of your question regarding like the certification or taking a training course or anything like that, if you are doing this as a recreational or a hobbyist flyer, you do not have to take any type of special training. On the FAA's website, you do have to register your drone. Anybody getting a drone has to register their drone, I believe, if it's under 55 pounds and over a half a pound. So for $5, just go to their website. All the instructions are there to register your drone. Also, if you are flying it recreationally, like I just said we are, it also explains all of the rules on flying your drone. So. With all that said, that's pretty much what you have to follow. Now there's other different types of training for drones and those require specific types of courses that you have to take. So it really depends on your use and how you're going to use the drone. But I would recommend that you at least go to the FAA's website and read up on it first. And you can also go onto YouTube and watch a lot of videos as well. But anyway, that's a really awesome question and we thank you very much. 
So the next question is from Pedestrian Hippie. Thank you very much for the question. Did having Wally prepare you for any of the things that you have mentioned? I'm assuming that we've mentioned this past year in prior videos. I am so terrified of not doing something critical that I have laminated the checklist that came with my RV. Yeah, well, I mean, Wally was a great, as we said, sort of starter home. You know, we didn't live in it, and it was very small and compact. It was great for traveling, but it definitely prepared us for all manner of things, how we drive, how we plan trips, how we stay inside of it, how we, we move past each other in small spaces. And Wally was perfect training ground for that because it was so small. Now that we're like in this, you know, 300 square foot RV, we're like, wow, we, we can dance around this place. So yeah, I mean, I think that across the board, Wally was a great way to sort of dip our toes into that RV lifestyle, as we've said many times before, and to really get ready for the next stage, which is where we currently are at, and we couldn't be happier. So the next question is from Donna Harrell. Do y'all spend most of your time in a full-service campground? Do you have plans to start boondocking? And do you have solar panels? Well, absolutely, because we are glampers, we do spend a lot of time in full-service campgrounds. We like all the glamptastic amenities, absolutely. But on the flip side... Or as side, I like to say, we like the glamenities. Ooh, did I know. you just make that up? I know, glamenities. glamenities. All right. Because we are glampers, not campers. Oh, <laughs> yes. But, but as I was saying, on the flip side of that, we are looking forward to going super light, sort of like minimal and doing the boondocking thing. And in keeping with that, definitely solar panels down the road at some point will be absolutely crucial for us to be able to get all those glamazing glamenities that we need on a day-to-day -day basis. So, great question. Absolutely, we're looking forward to doing some boondocking down the road, but for right now, full service all the way. When we, you know, upgrade to our next RV, or even possibly downgrade into something smaller, mm -hmm. we're, we're still figuring all that out. But that will be our going out on the road full-time RV, and we are going to pimp it out with solar. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait, because even the, the batteries and the solar that's available now for RVs has gotten so good and so less expensive uh, that it's becoming more manageable for people to be able to afford. So I can only imagine in another five to six years what the solar industry is going to be like even you know even then there's just amazing exciting times happening in the future and especially in the rv community as well so that was a great question thanks mm -hmm. so the next question is from lynn taylor happy glamping anniversary thank you very much thank for you. any of you who uh might have missed a, a couple of videos in the past we just celebrated one year this past april my question, have you ever thought about getting a Class A motorhome again? Well, Wally was a, a Class A, but a much smaller Class A. He was a 1989 Winnebago Chieftain. We have talked about it, but we really like being in a fifth wheel. Even when uh, we were shopping you know, to go into this lifestyle uh, full time, we really didn't even consider a Class A motorhome. And the reason why is because we like that we can detach our vehicle and then we can drive to different places. I don't foresee us ever going into a Class A. Nope, I don't see it either. Yeah, but they're but cool. Yeah, they're, they're nice, yeah. you know, we, we, we don't judge. You know, what works for us might not work for somebody else. That's the great thing about the RV community. Mm-hmm. Great question. Thank yeah. you very much. So the last question for this episode of Q&A is from Waterworld. And they would like to know, have visits from family and friends lessened since you've moved into the RV? Now, as far as family, my family lives in New Orleans, so I don't get to visit them as often as I would like. But we do communicate, you know, uh, through email, social media, phone, all that kind of stuff. As far as Todd's family, they would come over to visit maybe once every couple of weeks because we lived fairly close by. But now since we're a little bit further out from them, they have come to visit a few times, but not as much. 
So a lot of times Todd uh, will, and myself will just go into town to visit his family. And then our friends, they all pretty much are raising families. So to make it easy, we just usually now just meet somewhere downtown, either at a restaurant. Once in a while, somebody might host a holiday party, you know, something like that. We have had a few friends come out here to visit. We've done a couple of barbecues, but because we are in a smaller space, uh, we just don't host anything with like tons and tons of people. Usually when we entertain, it's maybe just a couple of other couples. We haven't really like noticed any difference in the way we see our friends since we've moved into the RV. Uh, it, it just kind of changed, the dynamic I think has just changed a little bit. I mean, we haven't hosted a big party in like 10 years anyway, so. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, I was gonna say that was the last question. Yep, that was the last question. We're done? Yep, we're done. Woo! Another one wrapped up for YouTube. That's right. Another video in the bag. So thank you so much, you guys. Keep those questions Just coming. We love them. We love them. We keep love them. Keep them coming. Post keep them in them the coming. comments. Send us an email. Send us a DM. Just send us those questions and we will keep answering them. That sounded like you were almost singing. Maybe you can auto-tune it later. Send us some DMs and some messages. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Leave a comment to say hi. If you like us, please subscribe. And if you don't, our little fluffy dog will attack you. Arr!